Y'all already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life. And we're back. Why do 10 when you can give it to a friend? Are people still snitching? Hell yeah, they're still snitching. They always will be. Let's relive it. Now, snitch is a, it's a controversial topic. My definition of snitching is you telling on someone else to eliminate them or to get yourself out of trouble. I don't think that if an old lady at a gas station sees a crime take place and she tells the police what she saw, that that's, not, that's snitching. That's not snitching. That's, she's just, that's her being a citizen. But if you're out here in these streets, you're doing dirt, you're doing crime, you claim to be about that life, and you tell on somebody you just snitched. If you get yourself jammed up for something you did and you give them someone else's name or information on another case, you just snitched. If you and your homeboy go out here tonight and y'all do something crazy, you both get locked up and they come to you and say, hey, let us know what happened and we'll work something out and you tell, you just snitched. I saw a lot of snitching in jail. And the thing with it is when you see it, by the time you see it, it's usually too late. I caught my case back in the day that sent me away and there were no witnesses around, you know, and I'm not boasting, not proud of it. You know, I was a fucked up person. I did a lot of bad things, but there were no witnesses around when the robbery happened. I had seen a guy right before it took place who stopped me and asked me if I had a cigarette. I knew the guy we was actually getting ready to rob him until we realized that I knew him. So I fell back and was like, man, you shouldn't be out here walking around this time of night. I thought you were somebody else. You was about to get it. I ended up getting jammed up on my charges. It's time to go to court. I go to trial. And I walk in during my trial. And there stands the guy that asked me for a cigarette that night. Matt was his name. He's standing over there with the prosecutor. In an orange jumpsuit. I wasn't even aware he was locked up. We get underway with my trial. Judge asks him, you know, step up, state what you saw that night. He tells him, we were out there. We were out there up to no good. We almost robbed him. And that he's seen us moments before the crime took place. Then they asked him, they said, we noticed you're in an orange jumpsuit. Why are you currently in jail? He was in jail for robbery. He had robbed a Mexican riding through the neighborhood. The Mexican cut between two houses. Him and his homeboy were ducked down. He jumped up and hit the Mexican with a golf club. Robbed him. Ran his pockets. Left him laying there all messed up. As soon as he gets to jail, what do you think he does? Well, I know about another robbery I'll tell y'all about if y'all just let me go. That is what ultimately happened. Was that snitching? Because to this day, I haven't seen him. But he proclaims, man, that wasn't snitching. That was my homeboy he robbed. He robbed my homeboy. So I told because he robbed my homeboy. No, you told to get yourself out of a situation. Next one takes place in prison. We got a dude in there. He's got a high-profile case. A whole bunch of different robberies. We'd seen him. Maybe a year or two prior to this, all over the news, man. This dude had robbed so much stuff. Well, it wasn't stupid. He could They couldn't get all the robberies to stick. They never recovered a gun. You know, I think they ended up getting him on like one out of like, it was like 15, 20 different robberies he had done. He comes out of the pod one day and he's freaking out, man. He comes out of his cell. He comes down to the table where a bunch of us are at. And he's like, yo, I got indicted. You know, like, you got indicted? What you get indicted for? Indicted means they found out about something you previously did and they're bringing up charges on you. They've been working an investigation. Some new evidence has come forward. And now they know it's you. He's like, man, I don't know, man. I got, I got a whole bunch of indictments for a whole bunch of different robberies. I don't know how they could have found out. Um, they're hitting me with a gun charge. Supposedly, they know the gun. They got the gun. I got to go back to court. 
This dude, the entire time I'd been in prison with him, which wasn't a long time, he would brag and talk about his crimes to everybody. He'd be like, man, you see the one on TV about this or this or this? Yeah, that was me. Straight up, that was me. Yeah, man, I caught him slip. Like, dude liked to boast. Like, it gave him, I don't know, a feeling of power or importance. Like, like you're not a piece of trash. You know what I mean? You're in here with the rest of us, man. You were out there fucking up in the real world. You're shit. He gets his court dates. First, you got the initial. You have to go in to be actually arraigned. They have to formally charge you. Then the process of doing all that, you know, starts over. They take him out for overnight court. And he comes back the following day. And he's like, yeah, man, they charged me with all these different robberies. I got a gun charge. They found a gun. I don't know how this could have happened. He's saying, I think it was my homeboy. My baby mama might have told him where the gun was. I just can't get it, man. Like, they're going, I'm already doing 10. Like, I'm, I'm about to never be coming home, man. Somebody snitched on me. Nah, you snitched on yourself, man. You got to be careful what you say around certain people. Because there are people out here that will act hard and act down only for one reason and one reason only. That's just how they appear. Then when they get themselves jammed up, they will use you to get themselves unjammed. I think it's like maybe two months goes by and they come and pack his cellmate up. Tell his cellmate he's transferring. He gets a new cellmate and he's still, you know, oh man, I can't, I can't believe I got these cases. He is stressed as you should be. That's a lot of robberies and them shits carry 20 years a piece. And then the gun charges, like looking at a possible life sentence. He ends up going to court. He comes back. And this is just the whole process of, are you going to plead out today? This is the evidence we have. Or are you going to take it to a higher court in front of a judge or a jury and let them decide your fate? Are you going to fight it or take this plea? So he tells him he wants to fight it. As he's standing in the courtroom, they call the first witness. And the person they bring in the courtroom is his cellmate. This guy that he was living in a cell with, that he sat there every single day, just flapping his gums, running his mouth to, telling everything that he had done, where he stashed the gun at, what he did with the clothes he used to wear, telling detailed stories about which stores he had robbed, people he had robbed, cases they didn't even know was linked to him. His cellmate would then go out, get on the prison phone, call the hotline, and report all the information that he was being told. He was pretending to get called out for visits, lawyer visits for his appeal, when really he was being pulled out to be questioned by investigators on what he was hearing from his cellmate and what he was telling them. This guy would eventually go on to get found guilty on a whole bunch of charges. He got so much time that before even any of us could find out what he got sentenced to, he came back and spazzed out coming in the prison on the bus. They threw him in the hole. We heard through the grapevine, it was like 50, 60 years, something like that he ended up getting. And his cellmate, his cellmate was never transferred. His cellmate was actually placed in the hole until the outcome of the court was done. His cellmate was then taken back in front of the judge. All his time was reduced. And he was set free back into the world. Do I agree with robbing people? No. Do I understand why people rob people? Yes, I do. I know what it is to have your ribs touching. I know what it is to, you know, have done everything you can to try to make something happen. And you've got a family to feed. You're at your wits end. You don't see any other option. I understand it. I get it. I don't agree with it. Do I agree with snitching? No. I know dudes right now to this day that are out here where I live at that have been arrested 20, 25 times and have never been to prison. They don't even spend that long in jail. And that's because, like I said, why do 10 when you can give it to a friend? 
One thing about me, and everybody knows this, is everybody rocks with me. Everybody. And that's because I'm a solid dude. I'm not a criminal. I'm not who I used to be. But people know, based on my past, my history, the amount of time I've done, that if I do something, I'm going to do the time. If you do something and I find out about it, it doesn't matter what I found out. It's not my business. You know what I mean? It's up to you to get away or do whatever you did. That's on you. I'm not going to take nobody else down with me, man. We have boys. We call them boys in prison. Sissies, gumps, girls. You know, they, they, they make a lot of different names for them. I just call them boys. You know what I mean? And it was a common known fact to everybody that a large majority of them were telling. We had female guards, and since these guys identified as females, they would always be talking to the guards. We had had other male COs come and tell us, um, in particular, about this one punk named Princess. And say, look, Princess is telling. He done told on another compound, he done had several other people locked up. He done testified against people. He is slowly knocking down all, and this dude had a lot of time. He is slowly knocking down this time. Do not tell him nothing. He was, this was a cool guard. And I've told y'all before, all guards aren't bad guards. There's some cool, actually some cool guards in the world. He told us he will tell on anything, just what he does. I don't know how he made it to prison. He's here with a lot of time. If he so much as knows you're tattooing, he's going to tell. If he knows you're, you're running the poker table, he's going to tell. If you're running parlay tickets and gambling rings, he's going to tell. If you're a gang member and you're newly documented, he's going to tell. I actually watched this dude come downstairs one day with the keys and unlock this. It's like a bulletin board with plexiglass in the front that's locked by a key. He had the CO's keys, unlock it take down all of the bulletins that you know prison post-its and things going on you know the chow hall menu visiting schedules new items on commissary he takes all this paper down and he posts new ones up you got to have a lot of power to get keys in your hand while you're in prison damn near impossible you get even so much caught with a key in your hand and they will bury you under one of the most maximum security prisons there is here in the state of virginia Princess would kick with all boys. Princess had a man. Princess's man knew Princess was a snitch. This dude's a certified killer. It just I'm just going to show you that even these dudes that claim to live this certain way or stand by something only do it to appease or look a certain way. But if it can benefit them in any way, a lot of these dudes will throw their whole code out the window and just be down with it. whole bunch of dudes in our pod ends up getting locked up. Dudes doing gang recruiting, whole bunch of new gang members. They come in, search for tattoos, find a whole bunch of new dudes with tattoos, gang tattoos. Everybody automatically assumes it's this dude, Princess. We didn't have none of these issues for this fucker showed up. Now all of a sudden he's here. People are getting locked up left and right. We're getting shook down all the time. Things that everybody's known about, you know, are now getting torn off. And the only new factor in here is this dude. You know them blood dudes ended up stomping Princess? They ended up beating the shit out of him, running up in his cell, beating him up, beating his man up. And not only did he testify to the assaults, so did his man. This dude was supposed to be this gangster gorilla killer. But in the name of what he said was love, Oh, y'all shit, y'all can't be beating on a woman. That's not a woman, dog. I'm just saying, hey, no offense to nobody. We're locked up. That's not a woman. It's all, We're all men here. Y'all gonna beat on the woman like that, you know what I mean? He was, this is all he's yelling from the whole, yeah, you know what I mean? I let the people know what happened, and y'all paint me, blah, blah, blah. And just like that, they told. There is no street code anymore. Everybody says there is, but I want you to think about something. When you're the only one out of a whole group of dudes that is abiding by that street code, is it really a street code? Now, you can have morals. You can have principles. 
you can agree or disagree with something. But if you and all the people around you aren't on the same page, you're destined to burn. Watch your circle. Watch the people around you. Know what they're capable of. Keep your eye on that guy that always goes to jail, gets right back out, and never goes to prison. There's a reason behind that. And most importantly, don't commit crimes. And you don't have to worry about none of that. Y'all know this is a crazy world, man. And these are just, you know, these places are just crazier worlds inside this world we live in. Y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? <laughs> Snitching, man. And as usual, this is Jay Williams, Let's Live Life. And to all my real ones, and the awesome real ones watching, because y'all still watching me. Y'all know how we do, man. Salute.